Today on How They Do It, Plumbuses. Everyone has a plumbus in their home. First, they take the dingle pop and they smooth it out with a bunch of schleem. The schleem is then repurposed for later batches. They take the dingle bop and they push it through the grumbo where the fleeb is rubbed against it. It's important that the fleeb is rubbed because the fleeb has all of the fleeb juice. Then a shlami shows up and he rubs it and spits on it. They cut the fleeb. There's several hizzards in the way. The blamps rub against the trumbles and the plubis and grumbo are shaved away. That leaves you with a regular old plumbus. I always wondered how uh, plumbuses got made. Due to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. You're listening to The Everett Lee Show, a shot of entertainment to the head. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the entertainment. Welcome to the Everett Lee Show Podcast. I'm Everett Lee. Quick shout out to all my followers on Twitter. You can follow me at the Everett Lore Score Lee. Facebook.com slash the Everett Lee. Stop by there and click that like button. Also, Everett Lee Show dot Weebly dot com, the official website of the Everett Lee Show Podcast. Here we are again. Episode 60, man. We're starting to climb that bitch, man. <laughs> well, what do I begin? Oh, yeah. I got a co-host this week. Back on the program, ladies and gentlemen, is none other than the charismatic, fantastic, extraordinary McShaft. What's up, man? I'm back like a case of the herpes, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> like that a lot yeah. of interesting stuff happening this week um got my ass kicked by my cat this yeah. morning i'm all beat up um but we've had a lot of stuff happen and uh, i can't wait to talk about it i know i um as you can see i'm also wearing my uh cigar city brewing t-shirt uh from tampa florida amazing place to go if you're ever in tampa recommend going to cigar city and I think at the time when I went, they had, I think, 14 different kinds of beer. Mm -hmm. And I think I had like 10 of them that yeah. night. Yeah, you definitely did. Yeah. You definitely did. Well, yeah, because uh, the ones I didn't try were like IPA, so I didn't really care for it. But um, <laughs> so, yeah. huh? Well, go ahead. Okay. I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> Man, look at that. He's cutting me off already. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, one of the things I've uh, uh, been looking around on here is some more um, random Reddit threads here for this show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did that last week. I just want to let you know I did that last week. Um, since you brought up random Reddit threads, let's run down the list on the, what's going on in this podcast this week. We got random, random, excuse me. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. random Reddit threads. Yes. We got music news. Okay. With uh, talking about the p passing of Tom Petty. Mm, the refugee. Yep. Uh, some news about Ghost and Marilyn Manson. Also, Wrestle Talk. We got SmackDown and Raw. The Hell in a Cell card match. And also, we have uh, Being the Elite, the latest episode of that. Mm. And my rant on Destiny 2. <laughs> Oh I'm, boy! Yeah, McShaft. Wait, wait till we get it there, man. Because I know, in well, we'll just just get there, man. <laughs> I just like to point this out. You know, I'm gonna go. So, I am. I'll just say this. I'm gonna go all cornet on this. Oh boy! When we get to it, <laughs> you know. Let me ask you this though. Yeah. Um, have you seen the new It movie by any chance? No, I haven't. Okay. I haven't either yet. Um, you know, I'm kind of disappointed in myself for that. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, you, the internet has been littered 
with memes and pictures of like from the it movie right and one of the infamous scenes you know where he's under the sewer and the kids you know trying to chase after his boat and everything Uh uh-huh so what they did was they photoshopped Boomhauer's face on the clown, Pennywise, okay? <laughs> and it says, okay, I just want to quote this picture out here. This is hilarious. Here, show it to the camera. Okay, I just want to say, say There's say, you in the uh, video podcast right there. All right, so you got Boomhauer's face there in the sewer, okay? Because, you know, we it, nobody really remembers King of the Hill, so I just want to bring this back. It Boom says, Howard. dang old, come on down, Georgie. Got your god dang boat down here floating. Dang old, we all float down here, man. Talking about god dang y'all float too, man. <laughs> oh my god, what the fuck he's done? <laughs> Damn, man. You you mentioned this morning you got attacked by a cat. Yeah. Tell me tell me what tell me what happened now. Well, um, we we're trying to find a home for this cat that we'd found, and um, we had someone coming by that was going to look at the cat and possibly take her. So, of course, uh-huh. you know, any other day of the week, she's out laying around, fine. Right. Someone walks in the house, boom, she's hidden. So, we're sitting here chasing this cat through the house. Runs in the laundry room, can't find it, so we throw some food out. Uh-huh. And my other cat, because I got a bangle, um, he's out eating the food, just like, oh, cool, food, oh, I'm fat. <laughs> then all of a sudden, they, the little one just boom, like zooms by across the house into our bedroom. We're like, fuck, because she always goes underneath her dresser. So I'm diving on the floor, looking under the dresser, can't find the cat. And I'm like, well, <laughs> maybe the cat like went up into one of the bottom like drawers or something. So I open the drawer, and there's the cat laying there on the T-shirt. So I go to grab it, and it like flips out and does some like Jackie Chan like Krav Maga shit <laughs> and ends up like slashing my hands and everything and takes off across the house and I'm sitting here and my hands are just like bleeding all over the place and um, I don't know if you can see it but I got one right there on that wrist I got one right there on the palm of the hand and then the top of my fingers all fucked up I know so man I came around the corner I'm like I got the stigmata <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Damn. Fucking cat. <laughs> so, of course, like a half an hour later, the cat comes out and is just like fine as dandy laying on the couch next to me. So, oh, man. Yeah. That, fucking cat. That's crazy. That is, that is crazy. Yeah, I'm telling you. Uh, <laughs> well, not much has happened to me since last week. I mean, I went solo on this podcast and... I pretty much I handled it, made it short, simple, really enjoyable. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts lately. Last night I listened to uh, Steve Austin's new podcast. He had uh, Dave Palumbo on. Um, you ever heard of that um, supplement uh, called Species? No. No? Yeah. With like bodybuilding and stuff like that? He's the uh, I usually take like C4 and like, um, like Alpha Amino and stuff like that. Right. BCAs. Well, he uh, he was on there, and I guess uh, Steve Austin on the latest podcast. If you want to check it out, it just dropped yesterday on Tuesday. It on the podcast he's talking about taking the keto diet, and uh, Dave Palumbo is the guy who created the keto diet. Diet, excuse me. And he goes through. He talks about everything he has to go through with the keto diet. The foods and takes and stuff like that really good interesting conversation and stuff about the human body Dave Palumbo mentioned stuff about the human body I didn't even know about that like our cells and stuff with the fatty cells anido acids and carbo- carbohydrates all that stuff with our bodies it's a really good podcast Steve got him on there to talk about what he's doing what works for him with the keto diet so if you want to check that out, I suggest that you check that out. And mm-hmm. before we kick this podcast off, I just want to mention that uh, Ooh. Deland City Limits. Limits. Deland City Limits Tap Room. Tap Room. You can head over there and check out a live recording of Draft Tuesday of ELS you can stop by there they got plenty of uh, activities to do they just redid they just redid the redid it did yeah they redid it remodeled yes they just remodeled 
uh-huh. the whole section in there. Cool. They have a kitchen now. You can or- actually have your favorite brew, and you can actually have some food to go Ooh. with it now. Ooh. They got they remodeled Ooh. the outdoor and indoor of city limits. You still got pool tables, dart. You can uh, play darts. Yeah, you can do yeah. a lot of stuff. A karaoke machine. Yep. You know what I think yeah. we should do? We should so, create a an ELS BLT. <laughs> like that? It's just all abbreviations. That's all it is. It's the, the, the abbreviation sandwich. Oh, yeah. The ELS BLT. Say that <laughs> 10 times fast to your waitress. <laughs> so check out Deland City Limits Tap Room. And if you're in Florida and you're in Deland, Florida, stop by there. Let Jimbo know what's up. You come by. Tuesday nights is guys' night starting at 9 p.m. So be sure to head over there on uh, Tuesday nights and have yourself a brew and guys night out amazon.com the official banners on the every least show dot weebly dot com website right there viewing this video and listeners head over to every least show dot weebly dot com and check out the amazon dot com links when you click on those, you order from Amazon.com. It gives a little bit back to the podcast and gives a little bit back to the website. It helps hmm. keeps us afloat. So be sure to check that out right there. <laughs> Darkness. I might order something from Amazon today. <laughs> I think I might. Well, yeah. McShaft. Yeah. Tom Petty. Or not Tom what? Petty. Let's We're jumping ahead Clicked here. Clicked on the Amazon link here real quick. <laughs> Click on that Amazon link. I did. I'm on Amazon right now. I might hell, buy something. Hell yeah. Um, oh, random Reddit thread. Yeah. Random, right, cool. The random Reddit threads. What I got, did I got, you find this week? I got three of them here. Oh, we got okay, three. Yeah. Okay. So the first one here, okay, is under the category shower thoughts. Okay. Hmm. This one says, conspiracy theories make dumb people fear sm- feel smart. <laughs> okay. Now, <laughs> this is going to be good. Now, I know I'm probably going to touch on the sensitive subject right now. Okay. But <laughs> this is, is this current events? This is right. what's been happening. Right. Okay. So, we all know that we had a large mass shooting in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, all I've been seeing on the internet lately is all of these like conspiracy theories and people throwing out all this information about the shooter, what he was shooting, how much he shot, you know, all this kind of stuff. Right. So it kind of brings me back to a few weeks ago on the show when I said that when a hurricane comes, everyone's all of a sudden an amateur like meteorologist, you know, and then they're like an like a um was that one like like an insurance adjuster after? Yeah. So this yeah. brings me to my next <laughs> point with this thread here. Okay. Okay. Anytime there's a mass shooting, all of a sudden they, everybody is like an amateur conspiracy theorist, okay? Right. So, like, people out there, oh, well, if you listen to the video, you can hear this kind of caliber of bullet being shot. If you listen to, no, 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 there was a pause, okay? That means he's got this type of magazine. Well, if you listen to it, it's not this type of ammunition he was using. It was this type of ammunition. Bull fucking shit, okay? <laughs> all right? It's like... Stop with your conspiracy Damn. theories. Stop acting like all of a sudden they, you're like this 30-year gun knowledge expert veteran, okay? It's like, no, okay? These people are probably don't even know what a 9 millimeter versus a 357 Magnum is, but all of a sudden they now, because they saw the video on social media, they think they know like what caliber bullets are being fired throughout guns. It's just crazy. Yeah, it seems like everybody... Everyone wants to chime in on some kind of opinion and make themselves feel like they know everything and important. Really, it just makes them make look, look more stupid. Um, yeah. Second Reddit thread here, okay? What happens when predators eat body parts of animals that contain large dose of venom, like the head of a snake or the tail of a scorpion? What what happens? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. So what happens? What happens? Um, you know, all of our listeners, viewers here, uh, throw in the comments on our Facebook page. Um, you know, let us know what you think. Um, what happens when a predator eats, you know, the body part of an animal that has a large dose of venom in it? So if, for instance, a squirrel comes down and eats the head off of a copperhead snake that's venomous, what happens? Does the animal, you know, die? Does it get sick? I mean, does it have natural immunities to the venom because that's what its food right. source is? Um, 
And finally, this isn't really like like a like a thread per se, but it was kind of cool. Uh-huh. This guy in here posted these pictures where he took this pool that it was in this house he bought, and he didn't feel like maintaining the pool was gonna be too costly for him, and need some repairs done. So instead, he converted it into an underground water tank which catches rainwater, built a floor which kind of like levels out the pool, and then he uh-huh. has a pump that uses the water and pumps it into an above ground like garden. So I'll show you a picture of that right there. Oh, damn. The yeah. And that neat? <laughs> that is. So that is really if you neat. have a pool in the backyard, you don't like the pool anymore, convert it over into some kind of water resource, you know, make a floor over it and have a pump water and build yourself a garden. That That's awesome, man. That is there you go. awesome. That is. I mean. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Three. Not one. Not two. We got three. Random Reddit threads for this week on the ELS. Tom Petty this week, along with two big events, tragedies happened mm. this week. Um, like Mishaf just mentioned, we had the Las Vegas shooting. My thoughts and prayers go out to everyone in Las Vegas, injured, and who died from this crazy son of a bitch madman shooter and I just I'm lost with words on really what to say but I just my thoughts and prayers go out to the victims and the people who were injured at the uh, country music festival concert that was out there it's just it's a tragic man it is and another speaking of music another tragedy Tom Petty passed away at 66 years old, man, after going in cardiac arrest. Tom Petty had a string of hits and a hell of a career in his 66 years, man. I mean, he just pretty much just just a lot of good music. I'm lost with words with this. I know that... The first Tom Petty song I heard was Don't Come Around Here No More. I was about five years old, and I saw that music video of, like, the Alice in Wonderland where he was a Mad Hatter. I thought that video was the shit, man. I did. I thought it was really good. I loved the song. And I've enjoyed Tom Petty's music, especially in the 90s when I was growing up in the 90s. That's right. I'm throwing a 90s reference out there. <laughs> I'm stuck in the 90s, man. Oh, man. Where's um, your walker and your arthritis medicine at? <laughs> well, the thing is, the uh, you don't know how it feels. I remember when that song was popular. I remember when back when MTV used to play music videos. They uh, That one one of the MTV Music Award things, and Tom Petty got up there because they um, they bleeped out the word joint. Let's roll another joint. And when he got up there, accepted the award, he was giving a speech. He goes, yeah, I really do like the music video, but except that one part. What's that one part where I don't understand where it gets bleeped out? Just jokingly, you know, he was he had humor about it. You know what I mean? Which was really good. Um, he had a string of hits. Did you hear about um, how Rolling Stone magazine really pissed off his daughter about him being you know, about him being dead. No. He didn't hear about that? Well, what happened was Tom Petty, Rolling Stone magazine, put out there ahead of time and said he was dead. Well, Tom Petty's daughter got on an Instagram and posted a picture of him, um, not with him, but the magazine, Rolling Stone magazine with him, Tom Petty, on the cover. And she basically uh, said to Rolling Stone, how dare you say that my father's dead? And she basically told the magazine that they're de- they're they're dead themselves, just like uh, you know their articles and their Pretty pictures. Much. They're out of date. No they're one dead. reads it. Anymore. Yeah, no one reads Rolling <laughs> no one, Stone yeah. magazine anymore. Yeah, I did one you know years ago, but they they basically back in the nineties. Yeah, back <laughs> in the nineties. Yeah, when the, when music was really booming and stuff, you know, but. It, it's just it's ridiculous how they did that. And then finally, of course, TMZ was the first ones to break the news. They're no, they were It was social media. <laughs> yeah. Social media. And then TMZ was like, oh, yeah, we're going to, you know, we're confirming it. You know, it's like, this is, you know, Tom Petty's dead. Really? 
You know, a TMC jumps all over stuff, man. They do. You know, speaking of which, you know, you bring that up with all these places trying to, like, be the first to broadcast something. Uh Uh-huh. Um, when the shooting in Las Vegas happened, right? Apparently, Facebook and Google were the supposed like first sources to report all those information and stuff. Uh huh. Well, they admitted because they got caught that they pulled all their sources from 4chan. Oh, okay. Really? <laughs> yeah, they got it from 4chan. <laughs> so they were pulling all this information uh-huh. off these like posts from 4chan that right. were not 100% correct. They were purposely joke posts. So Facebook oh. and Google were unknowingly posting like joke posts about that and they got caught. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. That's crazy. That is freaking crazy. That is. Um, well, another thing, too. What? You know what else? Is that, you know, how, like, CNN and stuff and everything are still doing all these reports on Puerto Rico and stuff and how they're not getting help or anything? Uh-huh. There's been several, several reports from people living down there that there are government agencies down there, military personnel, and there are supplies getting the people and everything, and that all these news places are not reporting it correctly. Really? Yeah. Oh, so man, I'm kind of giving a big like uh, middle finger here to all those uh, news places that are trying to stir up. <laughs> They're trying to stir up problems and controversy on yeah. purpose. Yeah, they are. They are. They don't want to do anything positive. So fuck I, them. I do got to say one thing that... CNN, when uh, how Donald Trump called him out when he was doing that press conference, he's like, question, question, question. Hello, I'm so and so for C. Oh, you're fake news. Next question. Yeah, that's <laughs> that right. That was just great. That's right. It's like media stick it. Yeah, you know. Um, Tom Petty. Um, you have a Tom yep. Petty memory or anything you want to mention? When I was Tom Petty? with my friend's band over in Europe on tour, um. Every morning that we would get to our venue, uh-huh. um, the main sound guy that was touring with us would always sound check the house PA system with Tom Petty's Free Fallen. So really? every morning at like 9 30, 10 o'clock in the morning, okay, Tom Petty's Free Fallen would be blasting over the house PA system. And it actually got me to the point where I couldn't listen to that song for a long time. And I just heard it every single day. It's like, God, I'm like, okay. It's like, you know when, when everybody's starting to get out of their buses and get things going and you start hearing Free Fall on blaring from this venue. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. Free Fallen. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just... <laughs> Damn. Did you roll in too many uh, joints there? <laughs> Damn. Oh, yeah. yeah. We ain't in Colorado yet. <laughs> so, in other news, Ghost. Uh, uh, Ghost has had their final performance with their current lead singer, Papa Emeritus III. Yes. He was taken off stage by men in suits, and out came... Papa Emeritus Zero onto the stage. And in Italian, said that the medieval times are coming. <laughs> I, I don't know what that means, but well, it's going to be something they good. Say, their, what, lead uh, singer, was, their lead singer, Tobias Forge, has said in a previous interview that the next album is going to be much darker than their last album uh-huh. and possibly more of like a medieval influence. So. Right. They haven't confirmed yet if Papa Emeritus Zero is going to be the next Papa Emeritus or if he was just kind of introducing, you know, things for the next Papa Emeritus to come out. Well, apparently it's all an inside joke if you really think about it. From blabbermouth.net reported this right here. And they, got a, they got a video up where you can watch it too. But, you know... This is all the inside joke. The band supposedly demisses the old Papa and recruits a new one on every LOP. Because, but, because they do that on purpose because yeah. they're making fun of the um, Pope. The Pope, how yeah. they how they keep getting a new Pope right. every so often. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so the inside, it's, it's the same person, but you know, you know, it's the same founder. Uh, right. His name here, I I, mean, I can't. Tobias even say Forge. It. Tobias Forge. Yeah. <laughs> who no doubt performs as the new Papa on the next album cycle. 
So he keeps, you know, coming back and coming back, but, you know, known as, you know, one, two, three, and zero and all that right. stuff. It's just an inside joke. Now, one thing one thing is that the uh, after several years of not revealing his, of the rest of the band's identity, Forge recently confirmed his own while responding to the lawsuit filed by the four, four former members of Ghost. Yes. Who accused him... Who accused him, excuse me, of cheating him out of uh, rightful shares of the group's profits. Have you heard about that? Yeah, oh yeah. Well, what, 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 what's your take on that? You know, you know? I mean, he, here's the thing about it, though. Uh-huh. I don't know how it originally started, if it was originally him and then he brought in... Because the lineup has changed, apparently, like on every album. Right. He's written all the music to it. And he does all the interviews as a nameless ghoul. Uh huh. So from the beginning it sounds like it's mainly him with a bunch of other people, you know, filling in the parts. Um So I mean, you know, I don't know like the legalities of like what they sign in their contract and everything. Uh huh. But you know, if I was someone that was gonna get hired into this band, right. knowing previously that like the lineup constantly changes, uh-huh. I wouldn't take it as a permanent thing. You no, know? no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. And not, nonetheless, yeah. e- even even if they have new members and everything all the time, mm-hmm. the fact is is that one person's still writing all the music and everything. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I I like it. I'm still gonna listen to them because I mean the theatrics are there. The whole like theme is pretty neat, and the music itself is is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a lot of times in a lot of bands, there's only one or two people that write all the music and stuff to it. Like, yeah. if you look at like um, Cannibal Corpse, right? You know, there's only like I think two people that write all the music, mm-hmm. and then yeah. the one which is the bass player, he writes all the lyrics. So yeah. it's like you know, <laughs> I mean, whatever works works. You know, yeah. I mean. Well, it's like solo solo acts. Yeah, you know, they their their lineup changes all the time. Yeah, they actually with their lineups, if you really do think about it, they they have a lineup to record in the studio, and then they got a lineup for when they go on tour. Yeah, a lot of you know solo solo acts do, but yeah, if the lineup's going to change a lot in this band. I wouldn't take it as well. I'm a ghost man. I'm the. I mean, you know, no, if it you was may, one thing yeah, where they yeah. signed a contract, is supposed to get a certain percentage right. of stuff, and he was flubbing the numbers to keep more of the money for himself. Yeah, yeah you know, I could see that be wrong. I'd be kind of pissed, yeah. but it wouldn't keep me from listening to the music because there's so many you know musicians out there that are complete dicks and assholes, you know. But mm-hmm. you know, I'm here to listen to the music, not about if this dude's a dick, you know. Yeah, I mean, same, they, they, same they here. Said, they said about um, what's his name? Like um, Eddie Van Halen is supposed to be like a huge fucking prick, but you know what? I mean, they make good music, you know, and you yeah. listen to them in the jam and the radio. They do. You know, I mean, what was another one that's supposed to be like um, what's his name? Um, Vinny Vinny Paul. Vinny Paul. Yeah, you know? I heard about that. I've been hearing about that for years. I mean, but you know what? I yeah. mean, I listen to Pantera. Yeah, you know, I, do. I mean, it's not going to stop me yeah. from listening. I to listen them. to Hell Yeah. So. See? Yeah, there you go. Hell yeah, I listen to hell yeah. <laughs> you hear about Marilyn Manson falling off the stage? He didn't fall off the stage. He was or, climbing. Or falling off he the, he was climbing a prop. Excuse me. He was me. starting That's what to I mean. climb a giant prop yeah. during the song "Sweet Dreams," and the prop actually tipped over with him on it and landed on him. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, from him climbing this prop and it falling on him. He basically had to cancel about nine shows on his yeah. Heaven Upside Down tour following the incident on, which was on Saturday night after the injury. The stage prop fell on him while he was playing in New York City. Um, on Saturday night, the legendary performer suffered an injury on stage towards the end of the set at the New York City's Hammerstein Ballroom, causing him to cut the show short. He was treated for the injury at the local hospital and will be recuperating back home in Los Angeles. Um, He basically had to cancel about nine of his shows, um, October 2nd through October 4th, starting with October 2nd in Houston, through October 14th, will be rescheduled for a later date. Manson hopes to return to stage soon with more details on the upcoming shows to follow. 
But his next performance is supposed to be October 15th at Grand Prix Texas's Freakers Ball. Hmm. Now, he's at home, you know, recovering and stuff from this, and he wants to get back out. I All I got to say is with him getting hurt, he's like, man, I want to get back out there. That shows right there his dedication that he wants to get out there and make sure he performs in front well, of his because, fans. Because that's you know that's, that's what he is. He's a performance he's a musical artist. Yeah. That's yeah. what he likes doing. That's yeah. what he does. So he makes his money. I mean, yeah. yeah. That's that's basically what to, mm-hmm. you know what one thing I have to say about that. Um, now his, also you know what I did this past week. I went that? down to the local record store, Atlantic Sounds. Yeah, I was going to ask yeah. you about that. Um, I know they were damaged. Um, the they floor, got yeah, they have flooded. Um, they've torn up, the, Irene. they torn up the floors and stuff, right. and they're working on all that. They're still working um, on it. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, okay. it's, it's. I mean, you can't really tell unless you stare at the floor the whole time. But um, I was in there, um, scoping around for some new music, and I picked up um, two things here. Um, the first thing I picked up was the new um, Epica EP, the uh-huh. Solar System. Yeah, um, it's like I think six tracks and they're like five and a half minutes a piece holy absolutely crap. amazing um if you never heard of epica before check them out go on youtube watch some of their videos it's absolutely amazing um the first song which is like five minutes and 45 seconds almost six minutes mm-hmm. the orchestral parts are amazing and then it kicks into like I mean, the metal with the chick singing, and then it does like this killer, just like almost gent like breakdown halfway through it. Um, I mean, absolutely f- fabulous. Like, I could sit there and listen from start to finish on that entire album, um, you know, easily. Um, the second thing I picked up was uh, the new Arch Enemy um, album, was called Will to Power. Um, this one, in case you all don't know, uh, Arch Enemy was like this um, metal band from over, I think, like Germany or Finland or somewhere like that, somewhere over in Europe. And their original vocalist is this chick who could do like these really deep, like monstral growls. Um, she ended up leaving the band, and they replaced her with this other um, chick um, who used to be in this band called The Agonist, which I've seen a few times. Really good vocalist. Um, do some really deep like just like growls um and if you know some good like normal singing too um they just put out i think it's like their second album um with her on vocals ironically she's dating uh, one of the members of the misfits i think it's uh, i want to say doyle um she's dating and um this album is i mean phenomenal in itself they have some music videos out you go on youtube check them out too as well um then also I also got a copy of the new uh, Prophets of Rage album, which if you don't know who that is, it's uh, basically Rage Against the Machine, um, and they've taken upon two vocalists, instead of getting back with the original vocalist, um, Zach De La Roca, um, they got two uh, vocalists now, I think it's like Chuck D and, um, I can't remember what the other guy's name is from, uh, from like Cypress Hill, so... Um, I'm sure you've probably heard of them. They're all over the internet and stuff and everything. The album just released. Absolutely phenomenal. It literally sounds like Rage Against the Machines back full force. Um, you know, the vocals, of course, because you have two new vocalists, a little bit different than the original couple albums, but phenomenal album. I mean, you got the awesome guitar solos from Tom Morello in it. Um, I mean, catchy, funky beats, riffs, and everything. So if you're in the neighborhood for some new music to check out, the new Epica. Um, which was called the Solus System. Um, you have the new Arch Enemy, Will to Power, and the new Prophets of Rage. Three good albums to check out. Um, definitely, you know, go on YouTube, watch some of their previous stuff. Maybe they've got some new videos out you can check out before you buy it just to kind of sample it because I am all for sampling stuff before you buy it so you're not wasting your money on something. Um, yeah, you know, definitely. buy those albums. I recommend it. I mean, Nick Shaft recommendation right there on all three of those. <laughs> Buy them and put them on repeat and jam out to them for the next, you know, end of the year. Yeah, I, I enjoyed listening to, I think it was one or a couple of Prophet of Rage songs on the radio. And Arch Enemy, yeah, I, I enjoy Arch Enemy, their former lead singer. Oh, my God. 
you see this you see their singer you're like damn you know i mean really really attractive woman but that voice man you're like where the hell did she get that you know she just brings that out you know it's like whoa you know and then uh epica mm-hmm. yeah really yeah. really good band really really good band and it looks like um on instagram their instagram account um, Atlantic Sounds has won the uh, News Journal 2017 Best of the Best. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Why not? We need to go down there and check out, you know, see see what it looks like and, uh, you know, pick up some new records. Yeah, we're going there after the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, you uh, catch this week's Monday Night Raw. I did. <laughs> um, not really. It just, damn. You know, I, I hope, and I wish the product would just get really, really, really good. Right now, they don't really have anything going on. I mean, they're slowly starting to build for TLC. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, this past Monday, there's it left me with scratching my head like. What did I see? I was more like, Oh my God, what the fuck he does? <laughs> I, I just, I was like, really? What What got me, okay? What got me was when got, Roman yeah. Reigns, when he was wrestling the Miz for the IC belt, I honestly thought that Miz was going to lose the IC belt. I thought Reigns was going to get it because, you know, when he when Reigns won back the WWE title, mm -hmm. it was on a Monday Night Raw. Well, I thought, hell, you know, Roman's going to get the IC belt. They, they were wanting to do this before Samoa Joe got injured at no mercy. Oh, God mercy. <laughs> we were supposed to have Roman Reigns and The Miz do their feud. That was put off because, well, you saw what happened. Right. Okay, I don't need to go through that again. But all in all, Freaking, I thought Reigns was going to win the IC belt. Okay. Reigns, what I thought was neat at the beginning was he took out Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas. See, remember what I said? Remember what I said about Roman Reigns? And you said it before that wild, crazy Samoan because people, you know, give him a pop on that, man. You know, him doing crazy, being a wild Samoan. Okay. Now, what gets me about this is he's in this match and stuff and everything, and it looks like he's about to win, and then Sheamus and Cesaro just show up. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what the hell? They come out there, The Miz and all three of them destroy Roman Reigns, and they stand there and do the, uh, you know, mock the shield. Right. My first thought was, why are the hell are they out there? It didn't make no damn sense. I'm like, really? I'm like... Why, why are they messing with Roman Reigns? They're, they should be going after the uh, tag titles. They should not be involved. But then I got to thinking about it. Or at TLC, we're going to see a Shield reunion. And we're going to have, we're gonna have um, The Miz and Sheamus and Cesaro. And not Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. Honestly... That just left me puzzled. And two, Enzo Amore, man. I I I liked Enzo back in NXT with Big Cass. He's come up to main roster. I liked him when he was with Big Cass. Big 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 ass. Big Cass. Big ass. <laughs> big ass. I liked him Cass. when he was with Big Cass. Okay. Big However, ass Cass. I don't like the fact now that they split him up. They put Enzo Amore on two hundred five. Just to help boost ratings, but besides that, I just it left my head scratching. Like really, and right. then another thing when Mickey James, okay, Mickey James, she ends up going to the in the backstage, and I guess Alexa left some stuff in her dressing room. She goes in her dressing room. There's a pack of the pins and a walker calling her old lady. She ra races off, goes to Alexa Bliss's locker room. She beats on the door. Who's the first person to open up the door? Nia Jax? What the hell? Two weeks ago, Nia Jax dropped Alexa Bliss on her ass. 
And then she's right there in the dressing room with Alexa like nothing happened. You see, this is the stuff that gets me. It's like you face, you heal. You face, you heal. You're, you're feuding or you're friends. You're friend of me? <laughs> what the hell? What, what the hell's your take on this, man? What the I, hell? I, I think that they're, they're so uncertain on what they want to do that they keep trying to tease and swerve so much that it's just making it retarded. It's like it is. pick something. It is. It is. I'm sitting there trying to enjoy this. I hope, you know, I'm hoping I watch the product because I'm hoping the product will head in a good direction. But what throws me off is stuff like that right there. Mm-hmm. They just throw it out there. Fans are like, oh, what, what, what the hell's happening? Huh? Huh? I'm more traditional. You know this. It's like you got two people, say they have a match, and one gets one over the other. Okay. All right. Let's start building, building a feud. Okay. Start building a feud. We start building that. We build it up, and then we build it solid and good. We have a pay-per-view, and then we decide, you know, at the pay-per-view, we get to see who wins, who loses, okay? They usually sometimes do a three series of uh, rivalries, which turns out to be really good, depending on how the rivalry is booked between both, you know, the talent and stuff. However, it just gets me, man. It just freaking gets me. I mean... (sighs) Jeez. I know it. It's it's insane. What uh, I, I I think that they take Nia Jax and they need to put her by herself and they need to kind of repackage her as like this unstoppable like beast. Have her go through, do a winning streak. You know, kind of like Braun. like kind of like yeah, Braun, Braun or like Impact did with Awesome Kong when she was there mm-hmm. and build her up to be this unstoppable woman then you got Asuka coming in you know have her tease her with her undefeated streak and then you build it up for an entire year and then next Wrestlemania you got the two undefeated monsters going at it yeah I mean there you go yeah there you go there you go what ruined me for Asuka coming to come in the Raw was the fact the matter is that they basically was like yeah Asuka's gonna show up at TLC Really? I just wanted to watch. And just the element of surprise don't exist no more. Right. Like someone returning. This year, or no, actually two years ago, when I was up in New York uh, for Monday Night Raw, the night after SummerSlam, when the Dudley Boys just showed up out of nowhere, I lost my voice screaming so much because I was so happy to see Dudley Boys come back. That right there, they don't even do that. They should have had right after... Or leading up to almost TLC or at TLC, have Asuka come out at TLC. It's like, oh my God, Asuka's here. You know? No, it's like they're trying to sell a pay per view on the fact of the matter with Asuka and a Shield reunion that most of us does not want to see right now. We want the team, if the Shield's going to go come back together, make the rivalry of a team much more competitive and much better i mean i'm not taking any anything away from the miz i like the miz but come on man you can um, get another faction mm-hmm. you know for instance the ideas and stuff been thrown around it's like why don't you bring um some talent up from nxt and have them go r- rough shot or take gallows and anderson and finn balor turn balor heel put that faction together and go after the shield right you know what i mean that right. that right there but no they need to sell tickets to a damn pay-per-view that no one really has interested in because uh ticket sales are down and ratings are down so let's go ahead and let's throw the shield together sell this pay-per-view let's get oscar on the pay-per-view let's sell this so we can get butts in the seats mm-hmm. you know what i mean the casual fans yeah, they will go out there. They will buy it. You know, oh, I want to see the shield, man. Oh, I want to see Asuka. Who is Asuka? I don't know who this Asuka is. I heard they're from that NXT. Come on, man. It's like by the fucking network. You know, watch NXT. That's what gets me. That really gets me about that. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, the other thing, too is, you know, you're taking a group as successful as the Shield was right. and just throwing them together. Exactly. You know, like, I mean, 
That's horrible, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, if you're going to put them back together, you know, bring them back against a good faction, you know, not the Miz to Raj, I can tell you that, but a good three-person faction, like they kind of did with Evolution, you know, the Wyatt family and everything, and have them have a good feud. Don't just bring them back for one little event like that. It's stupid. Mm -mm. I know. I just, that really, really does get me. Besides that, enough of me bitching about Monday Night Raw. <laughs> SmackDown Live, okay? SmackDown Live was pretty damn good with the last segment of the night with Shane McMahon and Kevin Owens beating the crap out of each other. Going up into the uh, where the merchandise was. I was laughing, man, because Shane getting bounced off every damn table. That was it's pretty like, cool. <laughs> no, it's like boom, 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 boom. It's like you want this t shirt? No, no, let's go to this one. No, let's go to this one. <laughs> <coughs> ah, damn, I get choked up over it. Which we saw Shane McMahon get power bombed through mm -hmm. a damn table. When he got power bombed, it looked like his head bounced off the back of the um, off the floor there, you know? From the way it looked. Right. But this so, new stipulation. I, I, I would just like to cut in here. A little side note here. <laughs> so uh, you're all probably been, if you're watching the video podcast here, you've been seeing me like looking at something here. So um, I just went ahead and supported our show here. I went through the everettleeshow.weebly.com, clicked on the Amazon link, and purchased an item here. So I recommend you all doing the same here to kind of, you know, help things out here. Um, I'm not going to tell you exactly what I purchased yet. It'll be a surprise for a future show. Uh -huh. But um, I used my Amazon Prime here and got free two-day shipping on it, so it'll be here Friday. But Hell yeah. once again, everettleeshow.weebly.com. Click on the Amazon link at the bottom of the web page. Buy some stuff through Amazon. Support the show. Do it. Do it. And since we're mentioning Everett Lee's show, let's uh right there on the screen and listeners, patreon.com slash ELS underscore DT. Become a Patreon member and get access to Patreon member only podcast. Me and McShaft cover films a classic. We got the first two episodes up. Episode one, we go over the classic film Maximum Overdrive, and with episode two we got Blade Runner, 1982, 83, 84, whatever the hell. Blade Runner. <laughs> we cover that. We're in the process, or there's talks about us with the third episode. We're still going to get the details ironed out, which we'll be talking about well, after this podcast. It is October, so yes. I'm just going to tell you right now, expect some good Halloween stuff. Yep, expect some stuff. And... Since we're talking about merchandise, ooh, yeah. Since we're talking about like birch, like well, actually, ooh. we're gonna let's throw this merchandise in there. Head over to everyleeshow.weebly.com. Click on the merch tab to pick up an ELS and Chris Carnage T-shirt. <whistles> Look for special promo codes when available for free shipping, a per certain percentage off to save on when you buy ELS merchandise. And look for the month of Halloween. It's coming out soon. The ELS Halloween logo shirt. Ooh. So be sure to look for Ooh. that when that comes available. Ooh. Limited do you, time do you have any month uh, of October. Do you have any Plumbus t-shirts? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rick and Morty reference there. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, I, I just want to say... <laughs> back on track with our, with back, our, with Smackdown? our Smackdown talk. Yeah. Um, with, uh, you know, I was so disappointed in Smackdown because, once again, they just continue. I mean, besides the Kevin Owens, Shane McMahon thing, which I think they're doing that pretty good. However, come on, Kevin Owens, Shane McMahon. I mean, you can do so much better than a match than that. But they continue, once again, to just shit all over the heavyweight title by having this dude fucking Genie Mahal, whatever the fuck his name is, Abu Dhabi, Abu, <laughs> come out and make a mockery of Nakamura here, <laughs> beating him up. I mean, just uh, totally discrediting, you know, the Nakamura character. Um, you know, and the same thing now. Here we have for the SmackDown, um, you know, tag team titles, the Usos and the New Day. I, the fucking yes. New Day comes out in underwear. Which I think the underwear idea is pretty cool. But 
you know, quit worrying about all this merchandise you're putting out, and let's start fighting. Let's start wrestling. They have. You they know? have. I mean, that it's, feud, it's, it's I, the two the I, two things I've I've looked forward to SmackDown Live for the last month now. Shane and Kevin Owens, really good storyline there. I mean, when was the last time you seen Vince McMahon get his ass kicked? I know, right? I, was, I mean, you could even see <laughs> that. You could Austin. even you, when he, when he headbutted him, you could yeah. even see the Botox holes in his forehead when he was bleeding. It was great. <laughs> Damn. Now, New Day and the New Day and the Usos, that rivalry right there, honestly, battleground. What was the match that everyone talked about? The tag yeah, yeah. team title match. Well, I, I think that that now a uh, few a few weeks ago when uh at during the uh, Las Vegas yeah the tag the street fight w- with the Usos and New Day. Recently, I was listening to uh, JD from NY Off the Script podcast. He happened to run into Xavier Woods up in New York, and he asked him the big question about. The uh, tag team division. Mm-hmm. Why? What? Why is it lacking and stuff? And what's happening? He basically says what him, what the New Day and the Usos are doing is they're basically trying to lay the ground for other tag teams to come up, take that spot when they move on. However, what what one thing that he is not really satisfied with. Is the fact that there there's tag teams that's not getting really any kind of push like they are. Well, so and here's they, they, here's my take on that, and and that's totally creative team's fault because it is. Look, it look, is. Look, look at the Ascension. That's the perfect example. The Ascension was an awesome tag team. Oh God, I loved up them. To the main roster, and you yeah. just shit all over them. I okay? loved them. Now back to our Shield thing. If you want to bring the Shield back together for a good like you know a three man team. Sanity. You bring Sanity up to the main roster and have them feud with the Shield. Yes. That'd be sick. Okay. Oh God. Yeah. Or or Adam Cole and Red Dragon. Yeah. Oh, the Undisputed there. Era. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be sick. Undisputed Era. That'd there be you sick. go. Okay. There you go. But two things I'm looking forward to with Hell in a Cell is the new stipulation that was added. False Count Anywhere match, Hell in a Cell, with Shane McMahon, Kevin Owens. What I think, here's my thought. I'm going to ask, um, then I want you to chime in after this. Shane McMahon, Kevin Owens, someone is busting out of that cell. And I think Shane the McMahon fight is going to jump gonna... off the cell again. I mean, it's, it's kind of redundant at this point. It's like you almost expected that as soon as they announced it. Yeah. I mean, there's no surprise factor there. I think, you know, I think someone, they're, they're going to escape the cell and they're going to feud out into the arena. That's why falls count anywhere. Or if they do keep it inside the uh, cell, I wouldn't be too surprised for the fact the matter is that pinfalls can happen anywhere. But one thought and theory that I have is someone is going to interfere on the big man's half, mm-hmm. I'm thinking Triple H comes mm-hmm. in, tries to take out Owens. Oh yeah, I could see that. Yeah, you know, kids. Yeah, it almost. And here's the thing yeah. too. And this this falls on creative again, making a hell in a cell a falls count anywhere match. Okay, so first of all, there's little to almost no room outside the ring inside that cell to begin with to have a falls count anywhere. Okay, so mm-hmm. that right there just spoils it that they're gonna get out. Okay, I mean, you know, and then the whole point of the Hell in a Cell is to keep the two people in the ring confined, not running all over the arena. So they're kind of like doing this ass backwards and kind of retardedly, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, honestly, yeah, I'm kind of excited for it. But at the same time, I mean, they're kind of like they made it like almost like a retard hell in a cell or or a retard in a cell i mean seriously this is this is this is they're kind of making it stupid all aboard the midtown express to hell 
You know, you can't. How do you make a hell in a cell a false kind anywhere? You know what I'm saying? It almost just says, oh, the door's going to get broken. You're going to run out through the crowd, up the entrance ramp, backstage, back down the ramp, back in the cell, on top of the cell, in the cell, on the side of the cell, catty corner to the cell. I mean, come on, perpendicular to the cell. They're going to be all over the fucking cell, but in it. You know? Um, I just. I'm looking forward to that, and I'm looking forward to, forward to the Hell in a Cell tag team title match with the Usos and New Day. If uh, the New Day and the Usos, I don't think they're going to tear up the Hell, uh, the Hell in a Cell or the Cell or whatever the hell you call it, Cellar, whatever. Hell in a Too Del. much, too much. I don't think they're going to tear it up too much for Shane and Owens. Who knows? Then we got the. Thank God this is not in a hell in a cell. The WWE Ma- title match. <laughs> Jinder Mahal and uh, versus Shinsuke Nakamura. And then you got the women's title there. Uh, SmackDown women's title match. You got Charlotte versus Natalia. I'm not excited about that anyway. Uh, I'm not either. But um, And then, of course, you got the United States. Corbin, AJ match. style. I'm not excited. And honestly, I'm not excited for this match. Um, I'm excited to see AJ Styles wrestle like I always am. Right. But the fact that they're still putting Baron Corbin in these matches, I mean, I'm sorry. No. Get that guy the fuck out of here and bring in someone else that, you know, can put on a better match. Then we got then we got Orton versus Rusev. Not excited for that at all either. Now, I am looking forward to this because uh-huh. I want to see how much of a style. We we got a taste of it on SmackDown Live, but I actually want to see how this guy performs on his first big main roster pay-per-view. I'm talking about Bobby Roode versus Dolph Ziggler. I'm excited for that one. I am. I know that uh, probably Bobby Roode's going to win because they're not going to give anything big to Ziggler probably ever. No. I think Survivor Series where Steen came out was the last greatest one. Mm-hmm. But besides yeah. that... We all know Bobby Roode is going to win, so it's just a matter of how good of a match can they, you know, put on before that. Yeah, is it going to be glorious? Yeah, it's going to be glorious. Ziggler, and he won't give in till he's victorious. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Apparently, Breeze Dango is going to bring back the fashion files. No one gives a shit. <laughs> And then we got to kick off pre-show, which oh, is uh, your shit favorite and person. Shit versus shit and shit. <laughs> Sheldon Benjamin and Chad Gable versus Zack Ryder and Mojo Riley. <laughs> wow, um, ain't that ain't that crazy? Huh? Just shit on. Top I'm looking of forward to this pay per view. Just shit I am. on shit. It's going to be better than uh, you know, No Mercy. You know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I think don't know. It, it's going to have its know. ups. It's hopefully, hopefully it will. I don't know, man. It's nothing speaking. beats Cesaro knocking his own teeth out there. I mean, <laughs> that was good. That was the yeah, match. That was, <laughs> that was the match, man. Everyone talked about. Apparently, did you hear about um, security tackling a fan at a live event? <laughs> yeah. The, it, do right. people not realize you can't do anything in these? I mean, as much as you would like to jump in there and try to pretend you know how to wrestle, you, you can't. can't. You can't. You can't. You cannot do it. Okay. A fan tried to rush the timekeeper's area and tried to snatch the WWE title belt during the main event of an, a live event in uh, Colorado. Where do you which, think you're going to go with it? Which, during the live event, was... Uh, Jinder Mahal retained over Shinsuke Nakamura. A fan basically got, went up to the timekeeper thing and tried to snatch a WWE title. Okay, um, no one like no one's gonna notice the WWE title's not there. Come on, you not know that. But all those people what? in the crowd aren't gonna like stop you. Really? I mean, I mean yeah, you, idiot. You're gonna run off with the. You're gonna freaking run off with the. You know the WWE title. It's like you grab it and you're like. <laughs> Basically, I'm surprised they didn't, you know, shoot them in place, you know? I'm surprised they didn't do anything like that. But the fan was quickly tackled by security, thank God, and taken away. Um, one of the correspondents wasn't sure if the fan also tried to enter the ring, but he did go for the belt. The fan was just trying to boost ratings, that's all. <laughs> I mean, a live event, non-televised? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's basically I mean, what it was. Okay, you got barricades around the ring. 
that is for your safety, okay? Like, my take on people, you know, rushing the ring and getting in. It's like um, also a fan rushed the ring this past week on an NXT live event. Well, it went after Kyle O'Reilly. Remember, and Kyle kicked him in the damn head. Remember, remember when he had that, like, two-month span when, like, every week someone was jumping in somewhere? Yeah. Like, on entrance ramps and everything and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and it was just, you, like, it what was. the fuck? You don't know, you know, okay, I know everything is scripted, okay? Wrestling, yeah, it's scripted. You got these people as characters. They're playing characters. Just because if I'm at a live event and I don't like Jinder Bahal or I don't like Shinsuke, doesn't mean I'm going to run up in there in the ring and I'm going to... No. You don't do that. You it's don't that, do it's, that. It's that younger ass jackal generation. Yeah, they're, the too ass stupid. they're too stupid. To real- <laughs> they're too stupid to realize what's real and what's fake. Yeah. Yeah, they're idiots, man. They're millennials. They're freaking idiots. They're millennials. They are. You. you know, come um. on. Gentlemen, let's broaden our minds. Just I would I would use your damn head. You know what? I would like to bring this up on a higher note though. Um How I would high? like I would like to talk about some wrestlers, a group of wrestlers that are actually doing stuff that people want to see. They're actually probably some of the most popular uh, professional wrestlers right now in the universe. Elite. The Elite. The Elite. The B, B, the the elite. elite. Uh-uh. B. Latest episode of the Elite. Well, I'd like to start off by the previous weeks where they invaded Raw. Okay. Yes. Dude, the beginning of that was hilarious when Marty Squirrel comes out with camo pants and a Degeneration X t-shirt on. <laughs> oh, my God. He parodied the DX thing. He's like, yeah. wasn't that back in, like, 95? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that was like the greatest thing ever. It was. It it definitely was. It it definitely was, man. <laughs> See, WWE <laughs> dropped the ball on that so much. Mm-hmm. Okay? Like big time. Like almost to the point to where they made themselves look retarded. Like they should have had those guys come in backstage. Mm-hmm. Did some sort of like you know, quick little storyline video thing where, right. you know, they get confronted with three other top names. They have some kind of backstage brawl or something. And then they work it out where they have some sort, you know, and not even if they have a match, because, you know, WWE is not going to let them have a match, but at least right. kind of, you know, have a backstage segment plan, something to where, you know, it can generate some hype and get some ratings and stuff and some, you know, some positive notes about your company. But no, they totally dropped the ball on this, just like they dropped the ball on most of everything else. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I exactly know what you know? you're talking about, it's, man. It's horrible. It, but it is. But, yeah, this latest episode of Being Delete, it was called Hand Gesture, which mm-hmm. I thought was funny because it's cease and desist. And they, the stooge gets away and leaves a note. I like, um, I like how... The young bucks were like, you know what? Screw it, man. We're we're not about catchphrases and hand gestures. We're about our talent. Oh, they the they did respond yeah. with the cease and desist by making a T shirt. They said cease and desist <laughs> with them on it with the two sweet censored out and everything. That was pretty cool. I know. That was really cool. I know that was freaking that was freaking great. Mm-hmm. It was. I yeah. I definitely did like that. How they came back with that and they're like yeah man you know it's like bam they right always come up with something face. and a hangman page is back he's <laughs> yes. back it's you know mm-hmm. i love it how they take a negative and turn it into a positive oh yeah you know and honestly i you know i could see you know if they were like doing something that's like you know copyrighted by another pro- by another promotion or something but like you can't copyright a fucking hand gesture, you know. And but, but WWE know, and did. I don't know? think they did. I really don't think they did. They did. Apparently, they did apparently. back in. Uh, it's just like apparently two, impact. Fifteen. Apparently, impact <laughs> copyrighted the whole broken Matt Hardy thing. Apparently, you know, and uh, it's it's not. So you know what? I mean, it just makes WWE look worse than what they are. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just driving away more fans. You know, the big bully WWE. You know. It, yeah. And it, honestly, it just makes me want to not watch WWE just that much more. You know, 
And actually, I, did you see what's on their podcast? There's they're promoting a um, another like wrestling network that you can get, and if you put their promo code in from their being the elite series, it gets half off. So you only pay like four ninety nine for this um, mm-hmm. wrestling like and um video library thing like a like a network yeah and you can watch pwg on there and stuff too which is pretty sick because mm-hmm. if anybody hasn't seen pro wrestling gorilla that's like some of the most amazing wrestling you ever seen in your life it is it, it is. totally kicks the shit out of wwe like it even does. though there's no like well, huge pi- even though there's no huge pyro there's no like you know huge like backstage promos or like that fancy costumes these dudes go out there and have the best wrestling matches you have ever seen mm-hmm. like one PWG show is probably better than six months worth of WWE wrestling. It's more. It's a super kick to the head, man. Of entertainment <laughs> and wrestling. Yes, it, it definitely is. It definitely is. Well, if you did, you uh, notice the uh, title of this episode? Yes, I did. What's it called? The Wrath of the Traveler. That's right. <laughs> Actually, you put Wraith, but... What do you mean, Wrath? I spelt it. W-R-A-T-H. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! You I got was... Mick Shafted! Mick Shafted right there! <laughs> Woo! Well, actually, it kind of it kind of makes sense because this next one's about <laughs> Destiny 2, and they do have Wraiths on there. So the Wraith of the Traveler, that's pretty cool. See? <laughs> I think he did that on purpose. You just don't want to admit it. I was in a hurry. I was in a damn it's hurry. Always in a hurry. He's, he's always in a hurry. Really. <laughs> well, anyways. Explain my daughter. Oh! Whoa. Wrong hole. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> Whoop! So, right. Destiny now, 2. Now, here's the thing. How long have we Here, had this game for? I've had it for probably about uh, two week, yeah, two weeks. Yeah, same now. You got the day after I did, right? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah, so yeah, day, so about, day about two weeks. Okay, I'm gonna start off on. I'm gonna start this off, and then I'll let you jump in. All right. There is a <laughs> lot of things I want to get off my chest, and you'll probably look at me at the end of this uh, rant and everything going on, like bitching and moaning and bitching and bitching <laughs> and bitching. <laughs> And bitching. You know, and bitching, we should change and that bitching, too. And bitching. Are you and bitching? We should change that too. Player versus player versus player versus player and player versus player. Well, it's on. Every day, all day. <laughs> that's, that's what it's been like for me with Destiny 2. All right. I'm going to start this out and say back, I think it was around January or right after Christmas, someone at GameStop put a shot out of what we see as of now what we got from the cover of destiny 2 they i guess gamestop gets promotional stuff ahead of time so yeah. they can uh basically when you come into their store they can take your ass and corner you in the corner and uh force pre-orders down your throat like you know uh, like a giant dick like yeah yeah they're, they're basically shoving <laughs> their dick out shoving it down your damn throat want you to pre-order pre-order, pre-order. that's why i don't go to gamestop that's why, exactly that's why gamestop a lot of the stores is closed and everything. That's a whole different story, which we'll get to. A I go, day. I go in to buy a, a, a Nintendo DS game. Hey, you want to pre-order the new PlayStation game? It's like, okay. First of all, how do you know I even have a PlayStation? Second of all, yeah. Did I say I wanted to pre-order it? Exactly. I mean, so this fan, or not this fan, <laughs> the this fan. Uh, employee. Ooh. Snapshot it and threw it out on the internet. The internet goes ape shit. Everyone's wondering conspiracy theories. You know what, what, what's <laughs> what's uh you know what's up with Destiny Two? You know they're they're just dissected this damn poster. Because now Bungie. all of a sudden everybody's a graphic design specialist. Yeah, there yeah. it is. Okay, <laughs> so Bungie eventually comes out and says all will be revealed on this live stream at this time and on this date. Everyone is like, Ooh, yeah, I can't wait, man. You know you did that, too. You know you did that. <laughs> yeah, I, I did, too. I did that, too. I was like, okay. oh. <laughs> Hook, line, sinker. I was in. You were in. Yeah. We wa- We waited till that day came. We watched the live stream. It was E3, wasn't it? Or no. was it right after E3? Right after, right after E3. E3. Yeah. See, a lot of people were like, 
aren't, aren't Bungie going to show something about Destiny 2 at E3? No. Or actually, no, it was before. Actually, it was before E3. Yes, yes, it was. Okay. Because they played some of it during E3. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they had it. They had everything yeah. set up. Well, the day and time came. We watched Destiny 2. We were, like, dumbfounded. We were, like, in awe with this what visual catastrophic video game looks like. And Bungie laid out everything with... Uh, the new weapon system to mm-hmm. to basically the look, the feel, and how it plays. We also got a sample of the first mission, the beginning of the first mission of the game, and I they, think it lived up to the hype. It lived up it to did. the hype. It did. The beta. I got the beta like everybody else. Basically, everyone almost crashed the freaking PlayStation Network, Xbox. So, wait, just, just let me pause for one second here. 2017. Okay, we can put men on Mars. We can throw um, satellite cameras out of distant universes. We can send stuff to the moon. We can create augmented reality games on our phone. Okay, we can do all this kind of cool shit on these phones. We can do all this stuff, but yet we still cannot make it to where a game that you know that millions of people are going to be playing, even the beta... Mm-hmm. They still can't make it to where it won't crash the servers. I know. I, I mean, know. I think they do it on purpose. <laughs> I think they do it on purpose because uh, when it goes down, people are still trying to connect and they're wanting to get on, and they don't. They don't kind of walk away from it. Right. I mean, come on, people, get your shit together. It's 2017, almost 2018. You're telling me you can't put out a beta for a game as big as this and not have it hold up to the amount of people like me playing it. Exactly. I, I get your point, and a lot of people get your point. That beta was released in July. September rolls around. Destiny 2, Destiny 2 comes out. People jump all over that, and it's like one of the... That week or that day, it's like one of the top-selling video games. Okay? Mm-hmm. However, mm. as people started playing this game, they've come a, upon things that they weren't accustomed to and really didn't like i mean we already knew some of the stuff like especially how the crucible is going to be and all the all the stuff that uh was happening with what we expected but we didn't realize that there was more until we got the game and bungie was like oh yeah yeah this is what we're doing a lot of people and a lot of complaints I, I complain about this, and what's funny is you and the and the clan that we play in, they're like, oh, you're so negative about it, you know? Well, you, <laughs> you, I, I only complain about one thing, okay? You complain about, I think you got like 15 different things here, okay? Yeah, I, I only have one I thing. I only have one thing to complain. Well, actually, yeah, maybe two things. Maybe two things. All right, okay. I got more to complain about. Well, let me than start you with do. me first. Yeah, here, start okay? with you. Start with you. I could, I, I could literally write a dictionary about what you got to complain about here now. <laughs> All right, so, I wrote a damn book about it. <laughs> so the first thing that I have to complain about, okay, is the fact that certain things in the game, like raids and um, stuff like that. They make you require to have a certain amount of people to play these, okay? Right. Which I can I can see their view on this because, you know, they want to encourage teamwork, clan work. They want to make things hard to where you really can't do it by yourself. But here's the thing. Not everyone has 500 friends that they play with all the time on these games. Exactly. Okay? And the fact that now you're limiting people to what they can do in the game because they don't have a ton of friends they play with... It's kind of wrong, okay? They should have it to where you pick if you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, or six people you're playing with. And based upon how many people that you have starting this raid or whatever, the difficulty of the enemies change and your rewards change. So the more people you have, the better rewards. So it rewards teamwork. But somebody who doesn't have a lot of people they play with or maybe don't have any at all, they should still be able to go through and do these events and get some decent gear and rewards and stuff, you know, by themselves or maybe with one other person. 
So the whole fact that they're limiting on what you can do because you don't have five or six people to play with at one time, mm -hmm. you know, people have different work schedules, people have different lives, you know, it's like right. you can't. So that really pisses me off right there. And the fact that, you know, you're spending all this money on this game and, you know, you can't do half the shit. Mm -hmm. And the second thing that, that gets me is the whole like plateau effect with the light levels where you kind of plateau off at like 260, 265, and then they make it almost like really hard to get above that. You have to do all this extra stuff. And mind you, some of the extra stuff you have to do to get the more powerful gear to get your light level up is doing stuff like raids and everything where you have to have all these people with you. So it kind of like intertwines there a little bit. Um so, you know, I think that, you know, with the light level thing, you know, I could see where they want to get to the point to where they really want to challenge you a little bit, but, you know, they should have like certain quests or whatever it is that you have to have that light level before you can do it. And you should be able to do it by yourself and be able to, you know, get up to the 300 light level like a lot easier than what it is because yeah. now you're limiting people even more because now you can't do this mission, you can't do this type of strike or this because your light level isn't 280 or 290, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that they're, they're good about, you know, giving you a lot of content and everything they do in the game, but a big middle finger to them because you keep limiting everyone, you motherfuckers, <laughs> because you have to have like five or six people to play with at one time. They do. They do. So that right that. now, it's like... I'm afraid I've got some bad news. It, it is. It's it's really bad. What, what gets me, and you guys yesterday were like, oh man, you don't have to be like that. I'm like, bullshit. Bullshit. There's a lot of things that... I feel and mostly a lot player of versus that, player. <laughs> mostly player versus player. Player so versus player. Crucible. This guy this guy was excited when the videos were out of the Crucible mm -hmm. and the capture zones and everything. And then when he started playing it the other night, he was getting murdered and it was just this is stupid. This is stupid. It I don't is get it. Well <laughs> well I will tell you what. Uh, Destiny one on Destiny One control. Control. Let me start there. Control. Okay. Control and Destiny 1. You had you know, A, B, and C. You got three zones. You still do. Control. Still do. Control. You go over to, say, uh, zone C. You're going to... You, you capture that zone. You maintain and control. Okay. Here's the point. Control. Yeah. Control that zone you still do and you get points you as still do you keep doing that you okay still do. however they've done away with the point system in destiny 2 for control there's still points they want you to there's still points there's still points that's no, how you right. get your score if you control that zone yeah no you, still you get don't points. you don't get no damn points well yeah you have to kill people with the zone you have that, to you that have to right there that's that's bull crap you because see, you have one, to you get points for controlling the zone well, yeah when when you stand in the zone and you control it and it turns yours you get points for that and then you get points based upon if that's your zone that you're controlling and you're taking out and defending it well the well <laughs> The whole damn point is you're staying in that zone and yeah. you get points. You can. Okay? They, they want you and all the nitwits and kids that run around on Destiny 2 has basically thrown out the damn window the whole point of control. They got, you go to point, you start a game out. So you got A, B, C or whatever the hell zone you got there. You you take that zone. Then you run off and you jump back and forth between A, B, A, B, B, C, B, C, A, C, Well, that's because B, it keeps C, getting A, taken C, over. A, C, B, C, B, C, B, C. You fight over one damn zone. Then you got this zone back here or, or, or over in here at BFE that you first take over. And eventually, you know, the fight goes there. Control is basically it's like hit this zone, stay there. Hit this zone, stay there. Enemies try to take this over. But you no, can. they got the point you is can. you can keep jumping back between A, B, A, B, you don't A, have B, to. A, B, A, B. You, you don't know? have to. They, if, if, it's, if it's, 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 a team of, it's a team of four. So if you had two people on each zone, you could stay in that zone with your one other person and sit there and control it and defend it. The problem is that it's so... They don't give you the well, points. You they they do give you points. They, they do yeah, give they you give points. Yeah, they give you points when you kill... 
But when they you give maintain you, that zone, you don't get no points. I was watching it. Yeah, I was watching. Well, the yeah, they're not going to they're not going to give you points for just standing there. You have to you're, kill because you're, you're maintaining that zone. They did that in Destiny One. They took it out on this one, which is bullcrap. So the whole concept to <laughs> me of control is a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> it is. It definitely uh, is right well, now. What we were doing last night, and you didn't get to see you didn't get to see this last night because if you had to go. But we were doing control, and we had two people on A, two people on B, and we sat there and divided up, and we kept defending it the whole time, and like annihilated this team. That's the whole point. The problem, the problem of the biggest problem of it is that the uh, system where they put your team against another team, the matching system. Yeah, that's it, another it, it, problem. It's, it's so unfair that they give you these higher ranking people sometimes uh -huh. that these guys go around three hits, they kill you. Okay, and then you you have to jump around to keep getting your control zones back mm -hmm. because you're so outnumbered. Yeah, and since you're talking about that right there, one thing, it's like the quick play. You are forced to play control. You are forced to play these. You can't you can't pick them. That's the whole thing. Random. So last night I had to play control three times in a row. <laughs> I was gonna take the damn controller i was gonna toss that son of a bitch i was going to he then so we mad. clash came up thank god and speaking of the crucible and pvp no rumble or mayhem two of the best they'll, prob they'll probably bring that back with the next um they, like dlc or something yeah they they probably will they probably will but you would expect it to already have it because mayhem is fun as hell you remember mayhem because the first time you played it you said Damn, I got my super already. That's the whole point. Mayhem, yeah. your super fills up, and you just unleash it. It's mayhem, man. You know, mayhem, brother. <laughs> it's a ass whipping in a can, a can of wolf ass. But another thing the is that damn system. infusion system. Here we go. Yes, what the, happened to you? What happened to you? Damn infusion system. What's I'm not what the happened? only one that complained about this shit, all right? A lot of people <laughs> complained, complained about this for the fact the matter is I can't take a high-level weapon or armor and infuse it into a low level to make that higher. You got to have mods now. You know, mods. The thing that people don't realize, and I found out the hard way yesterday, I had leg armor that was 278. I tried to put it into a piece of armor that I like that was at 265. What happened? It ended up becoming 271. Okay. Because of the damn mod, that was five that you got to account for. That if something is high with a purple mod of five points, you got to minus that because that's what's actually going to be the light level of the armor when you infuse it. And that is just it pisses me off. The shaders, that's another thing. You can't have one damn shader and you rotate it around. Because if you come into a shader that you don't like, delete it. That's it. You know, but um, Bungie wants to make their damn money off of freaking DLC stuff. They want you to buy shaders to be permanent shaders. You heard about that too. Yeah. Which is bullshit. Try and to get money. Another thing is I get more rewards out of doing public events than the damn strikes. The strikes, I may get something, but with the public events, playing that, that's more fruitful mm -hmm. and more fulfilling than the damn strikes and stuff. And the milestone completion thing, that right there is crazy, you know? That you have it's, to do the nightfall strike as one of those. Yeah. And they no, make it. They make it and, they, oh. and they say, oh, you can do it with a 260 light level, but really, people that are a 300 light level are having trouble with it what's the whole fucking point then well the whole point is nightfall supposed to be hard i get that the, the whole point thing, is they're trying to fuck you in the ass <laughs> they, they did it to me <laughs> they did it to me i know i saw it those vex Bam. were like robot fisting you're like right there and the freaking nightfall timer oh let's put a timer on it that timer runs out then you don't complete it Unlike Destiny 1, you put a damn timer on the thing. If you beat it within that time, you get something special. If the time runs out and you beat it, you still get something. What the fuck, man? What the fuck? You know, that just pisses me off and pisses everybody off. 
You freaking put a goddamn timer on the freaking nightfall. You put it hard as hell, which I understand. But you expect someone to run in there and freaking... <coughs> so once again, you really can't do it. You, you, you may have more luck if you're a 300 light level, which they don't tell you. They and don't. then they even get a 300 light level. You're plateaued for so long at 265. It's like, what's the fucking point? Yeah. Those, these are the little things that pisses me off. But you know what? I'm just so addicted to playing because I'm going to keep trying and grinding and grinding. It's one of those games. Just wait till Far Cry 5 comes out. We'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of these things that you want to keep grinding at. It's addictive. This is like this is like a geek's heroin. It is. You keep ejecting yourself with yep. it. The hope to get that high and keep going and going. And the raid, a lot of people, which I don't get is, all right, recommended the light level is 260. A lot of people recommend to be like 280 or 300. It's like, well, then why would you make the raid light level 260 then? You know? And it's still hard. It's like my, the, our clan, it's like they got no hope about if they're ever going to do a raid. And this well, is because you have, have to have so many people to begin with. Yeah. And then, the, you know, it's like even if you're at max everything, it's still, you know, hard. It's like, really? Mm -hmm. It's like once again with that whole fucking maximum, minimum amount of people you got to have. So, yeah, I mean, it takes us like two months to even try to get the same like day and time off for everyone to play at the same time. And we still have to find people to get six people. You know, it's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. And that's the reason why I continue to, like, kind of get turned off the Destiny a little bit. Because they limit you so much. They kind of force you. You know, it's like they punish you for not having a thousand people to play with at the same time on your friends. Well, that's, you know? that's the whole thing. They, they expect, they think everyone has a lot of friends. And they made the clan thing so much easier for clans and why can't you join multiple clans at once you, you can't exactly you can't. there was a lot of people in destiny one who was in two clans they had two clans three yep. clans four clans so you know what when Whatever. the next good game comes out like far cry 5 i'll be definitely taking a break from destiny and playing that Okay, oh. and then you know what? WWE I, 2K18. I'll, I'll probably take a break and play yeah. that. Yeah. And you know what else? When the DLCs come out, I'm going to wait an entire year and get them all for like four bucks like I did with the first one. Why am <laughs> I going to spend my extra money on a game that limits me on what I can do? Yeah. You know? I, I will play. Just I mean, I don't, I, don't have to I, play, play. I don't have to play with six friends at one time to unlock, you know, the latest Ultimate Warrior in WWE 2K18. It's like, oh, no, to unlock the Ultimate Warrior, you got to wrestle in a six-way match with six of your friends at the same time or else you can't do it. It's like, no, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. See, they don't limit me on that kind of stuff. Player, it's on. Every day, all day. Yep, yeah, so... Play, play, yep. play. We're going to have a tag team match tonight. We're going to have an eight-man tag team match. You feel me? Holla, holla, holla. <laughs> in conclusion. Oh, in conclusion. In conclusion. Right. <laughs> if I had the rate destiny, if I had the rate destiny on a five-star rating system, mm -hmm. okay, I would give it a three and a half. You remember... Three and a half. Uh, the guy, the three guy and a that half. you're playing with, three and a half. Three and a half. I give it a three and a half. I agree with you right there. Remember MJ? What was it he said when we were playing the other day? He's like, you complained a lot. <laughs> I complain a lot. <laughs> yeah. And then you know, I, it's like if you notice the criticism I get back, I, I it's like, it's like. My my well, my know, cousin my cousin I play I play Destiny with my cousin okay well here's your he, thing he gets up he gets upset because I don't like I don't agree with this I don't agree with that and then our our uh, friend that's in the clan he's like you complain too much you know it's like well what he, the here's, hell here's the other thing I was talking to one of my coworkers who plays Destiny two and he had done the uh, Nightfall strike that they had last week. And he was like, oh, yeah. He goes, if you choose, you know, this character, the hunter, you're pretty much fucked. You have to have, like, a Titan or a Warlock that has, you know, the availability to throw two grenades, you know, back to back before it recharges. And he just sit there and just throw grenades the whole time. So, basically, now, 
they're even fucking you even more over because now they're basically basing the nightfall strike on certain characters what if i don't want a, a titan or a, a warlock i like sticking with my one character my hunter i don't like multiple characters so now they're punishing me even more mm-hmm I, you know what? I'm, know. Changing, I'm changing that three and a half stars to three stars. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I'm changing it to three stars. Well, you know what? I'm going to grind and still play this. And hope, hopefully what they've been talking about is Bungie has been listening to the outcry of the fans. Now, I do got to say this. It does take them a little bit while to actually get this done. But they do listen to the fans and they make sure eventually they do fix stuff. So it's going to take a while. But... You got to realize too. This game has only been out for almost a month now, so they will fix stuff. And the whole answer of "oh, go on the community forums and find people to play with" and like that, it don't work. No, not that easy. No, it don't. No. You might as well hang out in the tower and stalk everybody that jumps into the tower. Spend a week send them doing a message. That. Yeah, you know. Yeah, fuck yeah, that. Yeah, you may be lucky, but before well, we close this podcast. I want to mention that you can listen to ELS on the following right here. Mm. Lipson.com. Lipson. Everly Show. Lipson.com for the audio version of this podcast. Stitcher Radio. Stitcher. Download the Stitcher Radio app for your smartphone and tablet and listen to the Everett Lee Show. Type in on the search Everett Lee Show. And you can listen to the latest ELS and previous episodes on Stitcher Radio. iTunes. Make sure you subscribe to the Everett Lee Show on iTunes. Stop by there. Give us a rating. And let us know what you think of the podcast. I'm looking for it right now. Also on StitcherRadio.com too. Be sure to leave a rating on there as well. In case you all can see, I just pulled up iTunes, searched Everett Lee's show. There it is. Everett Lee's show. iTunes. It's there. We're not joking. We're really not. Yeah. Let me, uh, here, let's show, uh, let's show the camera. Here you go. So I went to iTunes, typed in Everett Lee's show. Okay. And if you can see, there it is right there. Okay. We're not joking around. It's really there. Yep. It's It's really easy to find. But you can listen to the ELS audio version of the podcast on the following Lipson.com Everly Show dot Lipson.com Stitcher Radio type in Everly Show on Stitcher.com download the app for your smartphone and tablet iTunes Everly Show is on iTunes make sure you give us a rating and a like on that I'm liking it right now do it do it just do it No, what are you waiting for? Do it! Just do it! Yes, you can! We can. can. Just do it! I might. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Shiloh LaBeouf. LaBeouf, LaBeouf. I don't even know how you say his name. (laughs) But also, be sure to head over to Everett Lee's show dot weebly dot com at the bottom of the screen right here the patreon website patreon patron get some patron everett lee's show take a shot of patron like while Michelle's listening talking about patreon.com slash els underscore dt support els podcast listen to us take a shot of patron that's right that's right facebook.com slash the everett lee oh you know what we can do fi- Thumbs up. The EOS drinking game. Every time we do a sound effect, you take a shot of Patron. Look at that. How many sound effects do you get through before you get hammered? Let us know. How many shots? Send us a tweet. Everett Lee Show on Twitter at the Everett or Score Lee. Send me a tweet, man. Say what's up. And that's it for this podcast. Well, hit the music, maestro. Before I hit the music, I want to mention that... So aggressive. New stuff and projects I've been working on will be coming out in the next few months. Be sure to check out social media for announcements on this. And that's it.
right. That is it for ELS. We are out of here, my brother. Tune in next week for your shot at entertainment to the head of the Everett Lee Show.